As your laptop gets older, you may want to replace the processor. Replacing the processor can help you increase the speed of your laptop. However, unlike desktops, there are more things you need to be careful of when you're looking at a laptop processor. If you're working with an Intel or an AMD processor and you're thinking about replacing it, you need to make sure it's the same socket type. If you find one that's the same socket type, you need to make sure that your motherboard is going to support it. You can check this by mainly looking to see what that motherboard supports now. If it's in the same series, let's say that um, you have a Pentium Dual Core T2050. All the T2000 series are in that same series, and as long as the thermal dissipation power, the TDP, is the same, they should all work in that uh, chassis. Now, when I talk about TDP, the reason for that is, with these smaller laptops, they're only designed to disperse so much heat. And if you put a processor that has more uh, heat output than the, la the laptop can get rid of, you're gonna have overheating problems. However, if the TDP is the same, and the processor is in the same range, it should work in that laptop. Now, if you wanna do a CPU replacement on a laptop, most of the time, your CPU is gonna be right under the keyboard. On some laptops, like uh, the Gateway P7811, they actually have the board mounted the other way around, and you can access the processor from a door on the bottom. However, with our machine here, we are going to uh, take off the keyboard and the trim piece that holds it on. Now, remember the little uh, the keyboard icons here that tell you which keys or which screws to take out to get rid of the keyboard. And then we have uh, two screws back here which hold the trim piece on. Now if we un unscrew these, take your hands, cup them on the back of the laptop, and roll it over. And hopefully they don't go bouncing around like that too much, because they are easy to lose because of how small they are. There. You got those four out. Now, we're going to take our regular screwdriver. I'm going to pop the trim piece off. I'm going to peel back uh, the keyboard. Now, for the sake of showing you the innards of this, I'm actually going to pop the keyboard loose, which when we did our keyboard replacement was similar. So in here, you popped up the connector, which this was over here. So you popped up the connector and pulled it out, and you popped up the connector underneath the uh, keyboard and you pull it out and remove it. Now you can see that we have a couple of panels here. These panels are all removable. In this case, I'm going to pull this one back a little bit. And this one covered the RAM. And this one on this machine, there's a little indent here. There's a little uh, connector up here. And there's three on this side. So what you do is you push against those and pull it out. Now as you can see, we've exposed the processor and heatsink. You can see the processor underneath it. And you can see the heatsink goes up to uh, upside the fan. So now what we're going to do is remove the screws here from the heatsink itself. As we take them out, it'll pop up, and it can get a little bit uh, tricky to grab them. So if you want to grab them with a needle nose, feel free to do that as well. Now, you may be saying to yourself right now, um, what if my laptop isn't built like this? And that's a very good question. Each laptop model is a little bit different in how it's built. Um, some laptops, you're going to be able to pop these top covers off like this and get right at them. Some are going to uh, require more disassembly. Now that we have that out, this heat sink is held on here by a pair of little, little uh, outcroppings. So you pull them out with the needle nose and remove the clip. Now, you may try to lift this up and find out that the heat pipe doesn't go up very high and that there's not a lot of travel to it. What we're actually going to do 
is take out, there's a screw here right next to the heat sink. Remember how I said that every laptop is different on how you're able to get in and out of the, out of the uh, CPU area. So if we undo this, this uh, screw for the heat sink, notice that the fan comes loose a little bit. Well, that gives us a little more room. We're going to take our screwdriver and put it here on the uh, tension release block and rotate it. And you'll watch the processor slide. And now the processor is unlocked. So what we're going to do is pull this up and make sure that the processor is out of the pinholes. Now that it's up, continue to hold it and go in here very carefully with the needle nose and grab the edge of the processor. It can be very tricky and you need to be very careful not to damage anything. So with a very gentle touch, you just pull it out. Now this processor is a 1400 megahertz first generation Pentium M. We're going to replace it with a 1600 megahertz first generation Pentium M. Now you notice that these already have some uh, thermal compound on them. If you're replacing it with a brand new processor that does not have any, be sure to uh, dab a little bit on the middle of the processor where you can see the core. Now, be very wary of when you pulled it out because the processor was in a specific orientation and they have a little, uh, little angular mark for you here. So in this case, the angular mark was toward a very small angular mark here on the socket. You see it right there. So anyhow, we're going to grab uh, this processor with the needle, needle nose again. And we're going to lift up that very carefully. We're going to slide that guy in. Remember not to push too hard or to uh, put too much pressure down because eventually you'll just get it slid in and then it will fall into place. That one. Right there. Once it's down, go ahead and relock the, uh, the CPU socket. Take your screws. Oop. First, you gotta grab your clip and reattach the clip. The clip is reattached. We've grabbed it on one end and clipped it on the other. Go ahead and put your screws back in. And once those are back in, you can button the whole thing back up. Now you may have noticed that I am missing a screw. And the problem is, is when I took it out, this screw here rolled into the back of the case. So in order to retrieve it, we're actually going to go into a full teardown on the laptop and the teardown will also be for anyone who is uh, owning a laptop that you have to take the whole thing apart in order to get at uh, the processor. So if we hadn't dropped that screw, we would have put the one in there lined this uh, piece back up with the little uh, spots here. Get everything lined in and slide it down. Take the next piece, put it back in. This might be a little difficult to see, but we're going to pop up our uh, our little connector. I'm going to push the uh, keyboard back in. And if you're having difficulty put, putting it in, it needs to come back up a little bit. Now that it's down, go ahead and push the connector down. Same thing with the with the little one up here. Little connector. 
popped up already. Slide it in. And then go ahead and push the connector down to secure it. Go ahead and put the keyboard back down. Put on the trim piece. Trim piece is down, you button everything back up. And once you put the remainder of the screws in, you will have uh, completely put your laptop back together. Stay tuned for our full teardown as we go looking for uh, the screw in the case.